my own experience then came many years later, which was when I was working for Cape Cure stockbrokers in Huddersfield. And I hadn't thought about that invention of my dad's for many, many years and just never thought about it. And it was January the 13th, which was his birthday. And um, I went into the office and the woman on reception, Barbara, said to me, I, I don't know what's going on here, I've got a, a real problem. Line 13 is ringing and it can't because it isn't connected. And so oh. um, I said, well, I'd ring BT if I were you, there must be something connected if it's ringing. No, I've rung BT, she said, they've st and they're sending somebody, but they've already told me it can't be ringing. It, it, and it was flashing and ringing. And what had happened was they'd had this huge switchboard from when there were 20 offices, and we were only down to six by the time I went to work there. So line 13 could not ring. It wasn't connected. So I, jokingly, said, oh, because I thought about my dad on the way to work because it was his birthday. Uh, I said, oh, well, you never know. It might be my dad trying to ring me, you know, because... Um, it's his birthday today and, you know, before he died he tried to invent a phone, you know, that, so that people could ring after the died. So she said, oh Liz, don't say things like that, you've <laughs> really spooked me. So I said, well, well, why don't you just put it through to the client room so it's not driving you mad, because there was nobody in the client room. Uh, and when BT come, they'll, they'll whatever, you know, whatever it is, they'll switch it off. So... Uh, I went off to my office, and when I came back through, they were talking about it in the dealer's office. And um, the dealing room is of any stockbrokers is full of guys who think that you know, it's all alpha male stuff going on in there. And uh, one of them, a guy called Marcus, said, "Is it true that you've been going on about your dad, at, you know, bringing you up from the grave and all that, you know?" and he said, you've really spooked Barbara. So uh, th they were laughing, you know, it's all went. He said, oh, you're so full of shit, Liz, honestly. <laughs> you come up with these things. And I said, no, see, I'm, no, I'm, you know, I'm serious. My dad did try to, to say, oh, I'm sure he did, he said. Um, and then he's laughing away there. And other people are saying, well, well, how did he do that? What was he, you know? And he's just going, take no notice, it's just a tale. It's just a tale. She's full of it. She can't. She just make a story up about anything. So you know, and then as he was saying it, and he was just going to sit down, and suddenly he jumped in, uh, and he leapt back like that, and I could see that there was something moving under the desk. When a couple of months before, in November, his parents had sent him a present to the office, right? They lived in the Isle of Man and they'd sent the present to the office and it was a great big box like this. And he'd opened it and then he'd just closed it up again like that and shoved it under his desk. And in that moment when he jumped back, I don't know how it happened. He may have kicked the box by accident as he pulled his chair up, anything. But in that box was, was one of those massive hydrogen balloon things with happy birthday on it, right? And it came sailing out from under his desk and went right up to the ceiling. And everybody was like... <laughs> it, was, it was unbelievable. And he, he was pale. He, he just, I've never seen anything like it. He'd hidden it because he thought it was really kind of naff. Fancy his parents sending him that. Do you know what I mean? Shoved it under there. Two months it had been there. Never moved. Right. And in that moment, up it came and went to the scene. Well, honestly, I tell you, everybody in that office that day remembers that story. I'm sure still to this day because everybody was so shocked and 
Annette, one of the girls there, was shouting, Barbara, Barbara, to the receptionist office, you've got to come and see it, you've got to come and see what's happened. You know, it was like, because it was like my dad going, you think you're not, you think it's not me, do you? Because I'd been trying to, you know, I picked the phone up when I said to Barbara, it might be my dad. I picked the phone up and it was just crackling, it was just crackling noises. But there was, you know, the thing was, I mean, if it had been my dad, I probably would have passed out, wouldn't I? But I'd, I just wanted to be sure it sounded as if it was connected. Mm. Because it wasn't connected. This was the whole thing. It was not. All these lines had been cut down, you know, shut off. Uh, BT arrived, tested the line. There had been no reason for it to ring, no reason for that light to go on. They never found out what it was. Mm. By the time they got there, it had stopped anyway. So... You know, I th I just thought you know that was so extraordinary, um, but that's the only experience that I had of it. So. Pretty good, though. <laughs> it was at the time. I tell you, I mean, it was so funny. You know, it was you're so full of shit. This you're always <laughs> telling me stories. I'm not seeing it. And then to just watch him jump sky high, the look of absolute horror on his face as this thing came out and for the rest of us as well it was like what, what, what earth is, is moving <laughs> you know in that moment it was very weird very weird because they all the, in a dealing room you know although all the desks are like this all along it's not like you know so everybody could everybody along that lane can see what's mm. going on so but so there we are that's, that's a great the story time. of the phone absolutely